Is this the best virtual tour camera of 2019? This is a hands-on test of the Ricoh Theta Z1, which features the largest sensors for any prosumer or consumer 360 camera. In this hands-on preliminary review, I'm going to discuss why sensor size is important, how to use the Ricoh Theta Z1, and how its image quality compares to the Ricoh Theta V for both photos and videos. I'll show you some sample photos and videos, and I'll also discuss its advantages and disadvantages. I can take a package. And this is the Theta Z1. So why am I so excited about the Theta Z1? Its key feature is the super large sensor. It's a one inch sensor, which is more than four times larger than the sensor on a typical 360 camera with a one over 2.3 inch sensor. So what's the big deal with sensor size? Well, the larger the sensor size, the higher the image quality, all other factors being equal. So what do I mean by better quality? So by that, I mean things like higher bit depth. So you know you could kind of like compare it to to having more crayons in, in the box to play to instead of like having eight crayons you got like 256 crayons so of course you can recreate colors more accurately and shades of gray more accurately there's also better low light performance and then third is better dynamic range so we're gonna test those out but before we do that we're gonna do an unboxing Check out the Z1. So here's the box. You'll see it, it looks very familiar. If you have the Theta V, it looks very similar. They're both simple black boxes with silver print. Um, Alright, let's open the box. Here we go. So far, it looks very similar to the Theta V. Mm -hmm. So here's the camera. And before we take a look at that, let's see what's inside. All right, so we got the neoprene pouch. Looks a little bit better than the one that's included with the Theta V, but they're very similar. There's a USB Type C cord and the manual. That's it. So the first thing I noticed is the the weight. It's like it feels a lot heavier than the Theta V, even though they're similar size. The Theta Z1 feels much heavier, uh, feels more solid, like this one, feel, uh, the Theta V feels kind of plasticky in comparison. And the other thing is the, the finish, see the, the Theta V has a smooth finish, whereas the Z1 has a kind of like a sandstone finish, it feels, um, makes it feel more upscale. Now they look kind of similar, but the Z1 obviously has a much larger sensor. The other big difference is this OLED display. We're going to take a look at that in a bit. Well, this has four microphones just like the V. There's one, two, three, four. And the bottom you have a USB type C and then a metal tripod hole, unlike the plastic hole in the V. Now, one thing that's missing is the uh, microphone input on the V. It doesn't, the Z1 doesn't have it. So anyway, let's turn it on. So I'm going to turn it on and there it is. And just like the V, it has a Wi-Fi button here. And then it also has a mode button to switch between uh, photo and video. This OLED display looks really handy. It's uh, a lot more intuitive than the LED lights here where you have to sometimes guess what they mean. The other thing is this has a new FN button. So what does it do? Well, let's try it out. So when I'm pressing it, okay. So it toggles the self timer. So no need for that combination when you have to hold down the Wi-Fi and then the power button. No, no need for that. You just simply toggle it off and then, okay. So when I press it again, so it says, now it says uh, my which means the uh, custom settings so and then one more time it goes back to the normal settings if you hold down the mode button 
Okay, so this one brings up the special functions that you can um, customize. So right now you can choose between USB data transfer or remote playback. You have two options to choose from unlike the this V where you only had one of those. And then if you hold down the FN button, see the display changes to like an indication of the exposure. So I think this is really handy. It's kind of like the top LCD on DSLRs. So the Z1 does have a neoprene case, but you know, I found a case that fits it exactly, this one, see? Um, and this is semi-rigid, so I think it'll be more protective. Voila. And it kind of is pocketable. I'll include the link in the description. All right, so now let's shoot with the Z1. All right, so we're here at the local park and we're going to be testing the Theta Z1 and we're going to be comparing it against the Theta V. So it's uh, close to the golden hour. There'll be plenty of light and shadows to play with. We're going to see how well the Z1 deals with the different light conditions. I found out that when you're shooting in RAW plus JPEG, then you can't shoot in HDR mode. So I'm going to change the shooting mode to ISO priority with ISO set at 80 to get the highest image quality. And of course, I will be using the monopod. All right, so I got to hurry because I lost a lot of time changing the settings. And then I had trouble connecting to the uh, Z1 with the the app so I had to like reinstall the app and so uh, yeah, hopefully I'll still get some decent shots for testing. Now do you want to see the sample photos and videos in 360? Then check out the link in the description below. There's also a link to a detailed written review. Alright so after taking those photos and videos what do I think of the Theta Z1? Well, compared to the Theta V, the Theta Z1's photos are a lot better in several ways. First of all, there's much more detail, especially in areas outside of the middle of the lens. So toward the stitch line, it gets sharper and sharper compared to the Theta V. So another major improvement with the Theta Z1 is the flare reduction. It has very little flare compared to the Theta V. Not only that, but in scenes where one lens is facing the light and the other lens is not, the Theta Z1 does a much better job of blending the exposures between the two lenses. So what about dynamic range? Well, I compared the Theta Z1 HDR to the Theta V HDR and I found that they're not that different in terms of dynamic range. Of course, there's a little bit more shadow detail uh, in the Theta Z1, but overall, it's not a huge leap in terms of dynamic range. Now, of course, if you don't use HDR mode, you just use the standard mode, then there will be a much bigger difference between the Z1 and the Theta V. Besides image quality, another major advantage of the Ricoh Theta Z1 is its workflow. Not only can the Theta Z1 take photos in DNG format, but you'll be able to edit them in the Lightroom. And Ricoh has a special plugin for Lightroom, so you can stitch your edited photos from Lightroom. Now this is one of the features that I haven't been able to test yet, and I'm looking forward to testing it. Another advantage is that you can use Street View. So I was able to use the Theta Z1 with Google Street View. I could even take HDR photos and control the exposure. So those are my impressions for photos. What about video? The Z1's video seems to be uh, very similar to the video of the Theta V. A little bit contrasty, um, especially in the shadows which look crushed. But in one of the test videos, the Theta Z1 had noticeably better stabilization compared to the Theta V. Now does that mean the Theta Z1's stabilization is definitely better? I can't say for sure yet because there were other scenes where the Theta Z1 stabilization wasn't that great. And uh, did I encounter any problems while testing this pre-release version of the Theta Z1? Yes, one of them is the battery life. It was much shorter than I expected, partly because it seems to drain really fast. So I could turn it on and without recording anything, 
I could watch the battery life slowly decrease. I mean, it was that fast. Like every minute or so, it would go down by like 1% or so. I mean, that's just a rough estimate, but just to give you an idea. Now you can, however, connect the Theta Z1 to a USB power source and continue to operate the camera. Another issue is the connectivity. So first of all, I have uh, a Samsung S10 Plus. I was never able to connect the S10 to the Theta Z1, even once. I also have an iPhone 7 and I was able to connect with that to the Z1, but sometimes the app couldn't find the camera, even though my Wi-Fi was connected to the camera. So those are just my first impressions of the Theta Z1 after using it for a few hours. Now, I will definitely do more tests and I'll be comparing the Theta Z1 against the Insta360 ONE X, the GoPro Fusion, and the All Tracker Alenta S2C. In the meantime, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks, and I'll see you in 360.